So in this video, we'll go through five different problems that use inverse trig functions or arc trig functions. If you see my video about how to do inverse trig functions, you've already seen the general strategy. But in this video, I just want to go through and really work through a lot of examples to show you the things you might run into that could give you trouble. So we're going to go all the way from about the most straightforward to the ones with the most steps. And so along the way, you can really see the whole range of problems you're going to encounter. If you look down in the comments, there's links to all the problems. So if you only care about problem four, for example, you can click on that link and it'll jump you straight to problem four. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So this first one is arc sine of one over root two. So just like in my other video, my suggestion here is the way to do these is even though this doesn't have an equal sign at all, go ahead and put in your own equal sign, right? Equals X or whatever letter you like. Then I like to write out what this means. So all that this means is that sine of x equals 1 over the square root of 2. So now remember the next step is figure out not yet where sine is 1 over square root of 2, but just where is sine going to be positive? Because this is positive 1 over square root of 2. So sine is positive on the top. So it's possible that it's going to be a triangle in the first quadrant and x could be in there. Or it's possible x could be in the second quadrant, and that's where our triangle will be. Well, if you remember back now from my other video, when we do these inverse trig functions, right away we have this little chart that shows exactly where x can be. So for inverse sine, for arc sine, it was that x can be between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Okay, so between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees, that's on the right-hand side. So this triangle on the left doesn't even matter. It's not on the correct side. If you're unsure how that works, go watch my other video right now about how to do inverse trig functions. I explain real carefully exactly why we're doing it this way and how it works. Okay, so let's keep going. So we've seen now that x has to be in the first quadrant. So the next step was just writing out what we've got. So sine of x is 1 over square root of 2. Remember, sine is just the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So it must be the case that the opposite side is 1, and the hypotenuse is square root of 2. Okay, so if you do the Pythagorean theorem, or maybe you just recognize this special triangle, then that makes that last side there be 1. And then we just ask, what triangle has 1, 1, and square root of 2? It's the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So in that case, I can say that x is 45 degrees. Or if you want to write that in radians, it is pi over 4. We know the answer we get for x needs to be between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. And yes, 45 degrees is definitely between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. So there we go. We've got our answer. x is 45 degrees or pi over 4. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so the next one maybe changes two little things. One is this arctangent. Maybe you haven't done as much with tangent before. And the other is it's not a fraction. It just says negative 1. We're going to see neither of these really cause any trouble. So let's start out exactly the same way. In fact, you're going to see I'm going to start every problem here exactly like this. So I write equals x. Then I write out what this means. This means tangent of x equals negative 1. Okay, so just like last time, my very first step it's just checking where is tangent going to be negative at. I don't care about the 1. I'm just seeing that it's negative. So I want to see where is tangent negative. Tangent is negative in the second quadrant. So our triangle could be there. And in the fourth quadrant. So our triangle could be there. Okay. So again, we look at our chart and we see, ah, for arc tangent, x needs to be between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. So again, that means we're going to take the triangle on the right there. This one on the left is not between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going. So again, we write out what tangent is. We know the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So right now, negative 1 is not written as a fraction. In order to use this opposite over adjacent, I like to just write it as a fraction just to make it look nice. Okay, so now I see the opposite side is 1, and sure enough, it is negative 1 because I'm going down. And the adjacent side is positive 1, and sure enough, it is positive 1 because I'm going to the right 1. 
Okay, so again, we use the Pythagorean theorem or however you want to do it, and you see that this last side is square root of 2. So again, this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So that means this x on the inside is 45 degrees. Okay, now the one thing you have to be careful with is, what is your answer? First off, should I be going backwards 45 degrees, meaning negative 45 degrees? Or is the correct answer that I should spin all the way around the other direction? In which case, I like to think of it as I spin 360 degrees, then I back off 45 degrees, which is the same th thing as 315 degrees. So the question is, which answer should I give? Because for these problems, they are not both correct. Only one of these two answers is correct. And the way to tell which one is correct is, again, to think about your chart for arctangent. For arctangent, x needs to be between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Negative 45 degrees is between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. However, 315 degrees is not, right? 315 degrees is bigger than 90 degrees. So I have to throw that one away. So negative 45 degrees is my correct answer. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now this one looks very similar, and you may be thinking, well, this is kind of a waste of my time. I mean, he just did this exact same problem, but with tangent. So why is this one going to be any different? We're going to see, actually, it is different, and this one can trick people up a lot. So I start out exactly the same. I write out what this means. Great. So again, we play the same game. Where is cosine negative at? Cosine is negative on the left, so in the second quadrant and in the third quadrant. Okay. So we look at our chart. Our chart says for arc cosine, x is between 0 and 180 degrees. So I throw away this triangle on the bottom because that is bigger than 180 degrees. And we keep going just like before. I'll write this as negative 1 over 1. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So you go ahead and fill that in. You say the adjacent side is negative 1. The hypotenuse is 1. You do your Pythagorean theorem, and you get that the last side is 0. So you just drew a triangle where one of the sides is length 0. So what are you supposed to do now? I mean, after all, you certainly don't know any triangles that are the 1, 0, 1 triangle. So this is why people get uh, confused on these. So go ahead and look at this graph here. So we see we are going left, negative 1, but we're going up 0. What would it mean to go left negative 1 and to go up 0? It means exactly this point right here on the left, right? This point, to get there, I moved to the left 1. I moved negative 1 in the x, and I moved up 0. So there we go. We found exactly the point that we care about. How do I get to that point? I spin around 180 degrees. And that is how you can do it from the picture. So if you want, you can go ahead and draw the triangle. You can see that you have a side of length 0. And then just think about that. what that means. That means scooting to the left 1 and going up 0. Put a point where that is, and then tell me how do I get to that point. I get to that point by spinning 180 degrees. And there we go. We've done that one as well. Okay, so this is the first one we've seen where there's two parts, right? There's an arc sine, and then inside it, there's more stuff, a cosine. And so a lot of people are scared of these. I'm going to show you they're really very straightforward. So we're going to start out exactly the same way. We'll go ahead and write out what this means. So what this means is that sine of x equals cosine of pi over 4. Remember, you take the sine from arc sine. You jump to the other side to get the x. Then that equals whatever's on the inside. So at this point, what we want to do is just take the right side there, cosine of pi over 4, and say what it is. It's a number, right? Cosine of pi over 4. When you first started learning some trig, you're sure you were given problems like this, where they give you an angle, pi over 4, and then they ask you what cosine of it is. So maybe you've got it memorized, but if not, let's go ahead and just do it real quickly here. So pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees. That's in this first quadrant over here. So that gives me the triangle 45, 45, 90, or pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2. 
The 45-45-90 triangle has sides 1, 1, root 2. And I'm going to go ahead and take cosine of that. So cosine of pi over 4 is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So now what I'm doing is the problem sine of x equals 1 over the square root of 2. If you go back, you'll see we did that in problem 1. And when we did that, we got the answer of x equals 45 degrees. So there we go. We've done this one as well. So we've seen when you put more stuff on the inside, it's not really harder. All we had was this one extra little step of actually computing what cosine of pi over 4 was. But besides that, it was exactly the same as what we've done. Okay, let's go on to the last one then. Okay, so this one is the only one that's really significantly different from the others. And why do I say that? Well, normally, what have I been doing, right? I start writing equals x, and I write what this means. The problem is, I was doing that because the thing on the outside was an arc. Arc cosine, arc sine, arc tangent, whatever. This one, the arc is on the inside, right? The outside is just plain old cosine. The inside is where the arc is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by dealing with that inside, dealing with the arc part. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this part right here, arc tangent of 1 third. I'm going to do this one on its own first. This is going to be my step one. So just like before, I'll go ahead and write out what this means. This means tangent of x equals 1 third. So where is tangent positive at? Tangent is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. And again, just like last time, for our tangent, we need x to be between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. So I can throw away the triangle on the left. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. OK, so now to find the hypotenuse, I'll do the Pythagorean theorem. So my hypotenuse is square root of 10. OK, so you might think you're in trouble here because you have never seen a triangle that is a 1, 3, root 10 triangle. We just don't know what angle x should be. The important thing is, I don't care what angle x is. After all, what am I doing? I'm not trying to figure out what is arctangent equal. I'm trying to figure out what is cosine of arctangent equal. So let's go ahead and look at this again here. So I've got cosine of arctangent of 1 third. And I just said I'm going to call arctangent x, right? See right above, I said arctangent is x. So really, all I'm doing is finding cosine of x. So just look at your triangle. What is cosine of x there? Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So it's 3 over the square root of 10. And there you go. You did the problem. So these are really nice because you end up drawing these triangles, which you maybe have never seen before. They're almost certainly not a special triangle. And yet, you can still do the problem just fine. So at this point, we've really gone from the very easiest arc trig functions, inverse trig function problems, to the hardest ones you can see. So you should be able to hit everything now. If there's something that you still don't understand, maybe there's a problem you're seeing that doesn't seem like the ones I've shown you, go ahead and leave it in the comments below, and I'll be sure to help you out there. All right, everyone. Have a good one.